can you give me some background on you? Uh, why, why filmmaking? Oh gosh. Um, I, I can't, I kind of need to roll it back to, uh, Bill Paxton as much as anything. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I, I kind of been, I've been a fan of film since I was very young. My, my parents took me to the cinema multiple times, like from the, the age of three, uh, you know, through to my teens when I started to go on my own. Um, I, uh, I then, I really got heavily into Hong Kong cinema. Uh, and that seemed to be my thing for many, many years. Um, uh, and then, uh, I can't remember why, but I just started watching lots of Bill Paxton, um, uh, movies, or movies with Bill Paxton in. Uh, and I wanted to be an actor. Um, and I wanted to die in films like Bill Paxton died in films. I think that was my kind of my big thing. Um, and so I started to, to, to train as an actor and I soon realized that I didn't like <laughs> being in front of the camera and I had more ideas about uh, being behind the camera um, and specifically writing. I've been writing kind of since my teens. Um, so uh, I started to, to write uh, you know, like short scripts. Um, and then one of my friends wrote a short script and I kind of rather arrogantly said, can I, can I take a look at it? And, uh, and basically rewrote it and then found that there wasn't anyone that could direct it. So I kind of fell into the directing. I really just fell into directing through, um, you know, being a writer. Uh, and, you know, as soon as that, you know, as soon as I kind of did that, you know, it, it, it stuck and I haven't been able to shake it since. So uh, uh, I think it's the, um, it, it, it's that cliche of kind of going from a blank page to actually completing something um, and you know, uh, having, you know, the journey that you go on throughout it, the people that you meet, the people that you collaborate with. Uh, and just you know, just seeing what the outcome is as much as anything. Uh, um, so, where did the idea for Scrawl come from? So, uh, yeah, the the idea came from um, uh, you know, as well as making films, I I teach. Um, I'm a lecturer uh, who um, teaches film filmmaking, um, and we uh, through through the college that I kind of work at, we had one year where they said, we want you to think of big ideas, big things to, to do. Uh, and me being, you know, kind of sarcastic, uh, as I tend to be, I kind of just went, well, if you give me uh, um, a camera and, uh, um, you know, a, a bit of freedom, I can kind of make a, a film with, with the students. Um, and, uh, think in no more of it than that. Just that, that uh, I thought, you know, what would be a good way of getting out of the classroom and actually uh, um, making films again? Because you know, I'd come from kind of working, uh, you know, as an editor and uh, making my own films uh, to to be, in, you know, to being a teacher and uh, uh, and I and I was itching to kind of get get those students out of the classroom to to actually make stuff. Um, so, so, you know, much to my surprise, the camera turned up one day uh, and I was like, oh, uh, OK, I've got to do this then, have I? Um, and, and so it, it really came from what, you know, what were they into, which was horror. Um, and the, the idea for Scroll went through many, many kind of iterations before it, you know, fell upon the one that, that we shot uh, because... Yeah, we, uh, you know, I, I kind of wrote wrote an initial draft, which was very much like uh, a portmanteau film, you know, with multiple kind of stories all threaded together, uh, because of the the way that I thought I was going to have to shoot it, which was with lots of students uh, kind of being through and being in front of the camera, uh, and I thought, well, if we only managed to do like two or three of the stories, then then it's fine, you know, we can make like little short stories out of it. 
Um, but as it kind of grew and developed, um, and we had uh, there was a you know a, a phenomenal artist uh, student at uh, uh, the the college who was just come out to his like his final final year. Uh, who um, I said to him, uh, it'd be really cool if uh, we kind of collaborated on a on a comic book. Um, and uh, uh, again, just because I you know I you know I like films that have those kind of times, whether it's a comic book or whether it's action figures or anything like that, just to, you know to further develop the the idea. So we started writing writing the comic book. Uh, while we were doing a short film, which was set kind of within the old world of Thrills, uh, how it was originally. Uh, and it was about halfway through that that I thought, what if the comic book was actually part of the story? Uh, and that's really where it kind of took off. And you know, I went straight, you know, I went back to the, the script, um, shelved the idea that we were going to do, and, and kind of worked it around the, the comic book aspect. Uh, which uh, in, in some ways was great um, because kind of it enabled different actors to come on board. We'd already cast quite a lot off the old script, uh, so it allowed more people to come on board. Um, but it, it also kind of um, it, it meant that uh, you know everything had to change, um, and uh, and we we kind of really just pushed through with. Uh, you know, not postponing the, the film and we just went, right, okay, we're gonna set it this day, we're gonna film and we'll just we'll just go with it. And uh, and you know, it, it was one of those experiences, you know, I'd made various uh short low you know, low budget um features and short uh up to that point. Um but you know this was this was kind of a completely different undertaking in terms of the, the amount of students that were working on it, the amount of actors that were working on it, and uh, you know, the constraints and everything that kind of came with that. Um, but ultimately, you know, for, uh, for you know what came out of it, um, it was a probably the most professional uh, shoot that I'd been on up until that point uh, because the you know the students. Just really stepped up to to the plate uh, and, and did what they did, and uh, uh, the professionals that kind of came on board to work alongside them um, again kind of just went, you know, you know, toe to toe with with these students, and uh, and it was, you know, it was it was it was one of those kind of um, lightning and you know, uh, you know in bottle kind of moments you know, where everything kind of just worked for the period of time that that we were working on it uh let's talk about casting because that's that's obviously going to be <laughs> one of the main questions a lot of people have is uh the casting for your characters all of them how did how did that process go was there a casting call were they students did you already have some people in mind how'd all that come about yeah so um i'll, I'll try to be brief but, um, uh, <laughs> um so I knew that there were a number of students that I had to involve in some way, shape or form. So there were lots of, you know, there were lots of young characters written into the script. Uh, um, I'd worked with uh, a couple of the actresses before on various other things. Um, yeah, and worked with, with them for probably about six or seven years. Um, but, you know, they knew me, they knew how I worked and they were happy to kind of come back and do, you know, what, what for them was something kind of new, uh, kind of working with with people that had no experience whatsoever, um, and yeah, and the rest was like casting call. Um, you know, we we um, uh, you know we put a post up on uh, on a uh, a casting report that that is now no longer, um, but it used to be the thing that the actors would get every week. Uh, you know, and, and within there, we put you know a casting call for for this, and and we just we got loads of people kind of keen and interested in um, finding out more. Uh, we we then kind of did a round of uh, auditions after we'd whittled it down. Um, 
and uh, and yeah, we pretty much passed from there. So we had uh, I'm trying to think now. It's been a few years since we did it. Uh, probably about eight professional actors initially on board, and then close to thirty students that I had to somehow um, find roles for. Uh, you know, some of them are you know, obviously background, but um, uh, you know, there were a number of it was a it was a big kind of ensemble cast that um, you know uh, I think you know when when we made it the the whole point of it, from my point of view was to get those students out of the the classroom to actually make the film and then get it to film festivals you know that was the ultimate goal for it um, not for anything else really to necessarily happen with it just for them to gain experience see whether it was something that they wanted to do long term um and uh yeah a, a certain certain cast member came on kind of right at the end of the, the period of time um so uh daisy uh had worked with one of the actresses who i'd worked with before um and she had just done a commercial with uh with um liz this other actress and uh, liz just kind of came to me one day and said, look, if you're after any uh, young actresses still, and I'm like, I've got 30 of them. Um, uh, uh, yeah, this girl I've just worked with on a, um, on, on this advert, um, yeah, she seems quite, you know, quite into it, quite game for kind of um, trying things out. So we just got, you know, uh, I, I kind of got sent her details um we got talking she seemed really keen we'd shot the short film by this point so i was able to show her that and show her um what uh what we'd done up until that point all the um uh all the uh, kind of the artwork uh for the um uh, for the comic book and all of that stuff um and and yeah and um at that point i was still rewriting for the feature and I basically just said to, to Daisy, look, you know, the script is kind of in a rewrite stage at the moment, but I'd like to write you a role. Um, and that ultimately became the role that she played in, in the film. Uh, as far as shooting the film, how did everything go smoothly and, and according to plan? Or were there some hiccups along the way, as there usually are with independent films? Yeah. No, absolutely. I mean, uh, if um, anything else could have gone wrong with the film... <laughs> uh, it, it would have. Um, we we shot. Uh, we initially shot it in um, uh, December of 2012. So we had like a three week period of time, um, which was one of the coldest winters that we had uh, over here. Um, so um, everyone, yeah, you know, everyone on the the crew and the cast. Kind of complained on how cold it was all the time. Uh, I think I was probably so wrapped up in it that, that I had no clue um, because they keep going, oh, I'm so cold. And I'm like, is it, is it really? Um, <laughs> and uh, so, so we had that. We also had, um, I think, you know, I think it's a, a thing with a lot of my films uh, over the years where um, we'll have something kind of quite badly go wrong at some point during during the uh during the filming and we'll just have to kind of work it out um i'm not uh so we had we had an actress on board who was playing a character who um uh had some kind of bad family news we've shot like a day or so with her um and uh, so she had to pull out uh so there was kind of a bit of head scratching going <clears throat> going through that trying to work out you know, do we recast do we reshoot do we um do we do something completely different with it and uh and one of the actors one of the professionals had kind of been talking to the students that were involved and there was one actress who um uh who uh was quite keen on learning uh, you know about behind the scenes as well as kind of uh yeah being, a, being in front of the camera and she ultimately took on the role that this professional actor uh, had. Um, so it was it was very much a quick learning curve for her to step into a role that you know hadn't been written for her. We had to kind of 
lower the age a little bit, um, but it kind of it, it worked really well, and she you know she really kind of stepped up um, and has ultimately since since then gone on to um, to go to drama school and come out the other side and and be kind of a job in actress. So uh, you know it, it, it was kind of a baptism by fire for her, but kind of worked out really well for her. Um, so we had that three week period where we shot, we shot, you know, stage stuff. We shot the majority of the, the, the other professional actors over that period. Um, and we had to come back and do, you know, do little bits along the way, um, over, you know, the, the next kind of year, year or so, uh, we just kept coming back to it. Um, and that was partially down to coming up with new ideas for things, going back and redoing bits that didn't work. Um, we had, uh, and there was an actor who was um, in the original version of the scroll. He was one of the main characters. When we rewrote it, he kind of became a little bit of a side character, but he'd already been, I guess, one of the, the more central characters in the short film uh, that we did beforehand, which is on the on the DVD of the the, the release um, and uh, he became it was quite quite obvious quite uh, early on into the shoot of the feature that he was struggling a bit with his health uh, and we we finished those three weeks and then I was speaking to the producer who was um, the grand, uh, granddaughter of um, the, the actor who was playing uh, the character and she kind of told me you know that he wasn't well uh and it wasn't long after that that he he kind of he died uh he had cancer and he he passed away uh so that whole role had to be you know i didn't want to you know i didn't want to you know cut him out of the film because he was such an integral part of the film and a part of the process getting to that point anyway um so we just had to we had to kind of tweak bits along the way um but uh, I mean, it shaped it shaped the film into what it is. And it's uh, you know, it's it's a it's a weird film. Uh, it's not. Uh, um, uh, I don't want to say it's not it's not a commercial film. It's not kind of like a a typical horror. You know, a lot of things that were influenced in it were things like Phantasm um, and kind of those those more kind of dreamlike films that. That are open to interpretation, uh, and that you know obviously having to rework bits in in post kind of lend to that a little bit as well, um, and and you know uh, and you know kept kept that kind of dreamlike state, that kind of off kilter state kind of alive. Um, but yeah, loads of things happened. Uh, those are those are two big bits, but there were loads of other bits that happened that just made made you have to. Think on the spot, and I think that's what helped a lot of, you know, the crew that were working on it. You know, they they did uh, kind of learn a lot really quickly. I had to learn a lot really quickly, and it kind of helped me as well. Go, oh, I really want to direct anything as big as this again, um, and uh, and and kind of made made my mind up a little bit on on that um, in terms of this was a huge, yeah, this was something that I thought. Well, if this works really well, you know, in my kind of naive kind of mid thirties, I, I was at the time, you know, and um, this works really well. Maybe I'll do this again, um, but um, yeah, maybe I won't. <laughs> not in, certainly not in the same way. Anyway, um, it was it was a lot more uh, work than I initially thought it was going to be. Uh, looking back, since this was filmed a, a few years ago, uh, those students that were involved, have they gone on to work in the film industry or the entertainment in, entertainment industry at all? Yeah, they have. Um, we, you know, the, the, um, uh, the girl, uh, the girl, um, <laughs> the, the young woman. Um, uh, so Annie, who plays, uh, you know, Annabelle uh, McGrady, who plays Annie in the film, and she was also kind of the co-producer on it she's now uh she's a third i believe uh third ad on a lot of tv stuff over here she's done a lot of 
um, uh, feature films as well. Uh, she and uh, yeah, and various other TV bits. But uh, funnily enough, she she worked on um, the Last Jedi, um, and she was assigned to Daisy's uh, um, Daisy's unit when they they shot um, on the island. Um, so they had like a a mini reunion of sorts. Um, yeah, a couple of years later, obviously, you know, uh, you know working on on Scroll together. Um, you know, Daisy and Annie kind of got on quite well, and um, I know that uh, 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 Annie's mum cooks Daisy food <laughs> while she stayed there. Um, and then, yeah, a couple of years later, uh, yeah, there's there's Daisy kind of playing Ray, and and Annie's kind of working on on the film. Um, and uh, so others, you know, others that kind of proved and also acted have gone on to similar things. They're working uh, in production. Um, uh, you know, as Sophie's another one who she worked, uh, she was involved in Roma, on Roma, the Bavarian uh, film. Uh, she, you know, did Aladdin. She's on the, the Danny Boyle film, Names Escaping Me, comes out this week. The one about the Beatles. She's on that. Um, uh, and yeah, and others kind of gone into uh, go to uh, film school. Come out the other side. One was a, a Sundance Fellow uh, um, on one of their their. Uh, he was the Matty who um, uh, did he's on uh, on school did the majority of the, uh, the photography. He did you know kind of the edit with me. Um, he he's gone on to kind of actually you know have. Kind of a decent career behind the camera in terms of being a director. Um, so yeah, yeah, uh, uh, and various others. Yeah, and various others. Um, I'm just re- yeah really proud of uh, the whole experience that they had with uh, you know working on Scroll, um, which yeah you know, we never kind of um, we never kind of pitched it as a student film because it wasn't. It was a film where we had students working on it and you know i i think you know i likened it at the time when we were um auditioning actors to give them an idea i said it's a bit like you know brian de palma's own movie in that you know he went into a college and worked with you know with you know, the the people that were you know um uh learning their craft there and kind of came out and made made that film or you know alex cox doing the stuff that he did when he went in and kind of went right let's go and make a movie um and that was you know that was really my my thing you know I, I wanted to go in and um i didn't want it to be dry i didn't want my teaching to be dry and just classroom based i wanted them to kind of experience you know independent filmmaking the way that i experienced it which was just grabbing a camera and going out and doing it and uh and seeing what comes from it um and as i said earlier on uh you know i've up until that point, you know, I'd worked on various shoots, you know, independent shoots, but with you know, people that had gone to film school and whatever and come out the other side and were kind of deemed professionals. Um, but, you know, the, the way that the students kind of just, you know, took the, took it and kind of went, right, okay, you know, we've got to step up here. We're, we're not just kind of doing this to get qualification. We're doing this to actually make a film. And they really kind of stepped up and, and went, we're making a feature film. We're making something that that hopefully people are going to watch. And um, and yeah, yeah. Little did we know at the time that that um, that someone within uh, within or, you know, on the film would end up being in one of the biggest franchises in the world. Well, Peter, that you pretty much covered everything without me having to ask many questions. I'm, I'm very I'm very thankful for that. <laughs> Uh, where can people see and get a hold of Scroll uh, now? And uh, as well, um, I'm a collector of films, so I I love films that have extra features on them. And uh, what they've done, which is really cool, is they've included loads of extras. So, you, you know, on the DVD, you get there's a commentary with me, which basically just talks you know, more about you know, what we did, what we did, uh, rather than being 
you know, too specific. Uh, the short film mottos on there, which is Life is Silent, Friday is the 13th movie. Um, uh, there's a documentary that some of the students that were working on it at the time made, which is really cool. It goes into a little bit more um, kind of, of their experiences on it. Um, and then there's some interviews. I think there's an interview with, uh, yeah, there's a short interview with Daisy on set. Um, and I think, but you can get it on iTunes as well. I don't know where else, but uh, I'm, you know, I think Wild Eye is trying to kind of roll it out slowly. But it is only in North America at the moment, so um, uh, you have to, you have to kind of <laughs> be in your country to own it um, or uh, you know uh, import it. So, but but that's fine. I mean, you know, it's nice that it's kind of having a life. Um, because for a long time, we, you know, we, we'd had various people, uh, you know, ask about it, uh, you know, about releasing it, but they wanted to change so much. So they wanted to change the name. They wanted to do this, that, the other. They wanted to release it with nothing on it. And I felt that that was, you know, it was a shame, not only for, you know, people to actually see the whole kind of genesis of how it kind of came about, but also to, um, you know, the name scroll the name of the comic book within it um and you know it's such a big part of it to to call it aardvark or something to move it further up the alphabet you know everyone kind of you know let's, let's start it with a a or a b um just kind of took away from from what we you, know, you get films change you know names change all the time but we were like oh well, you know what do we do we really want to release it so that's why it's just uh, come out as much as anything um so yeah yeah so you can see it yeah you can buy it you can go down to the walmart and buy it so how much for but there you go <laughs> <laughs> all right peter thank you very much for taking time out of your day to talk to me today i really appreciate it and uh hopefully hopefully we'll hopefully you'll make more films yeah, well, <laughs> that, no, that no, come no. over here <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i i i mean i'm writing stuff now for for another direction we've got a We've got a film um, coming out in the next month, which hopefully will do film festivals, which has got various um, ex henson puppeteers working on it. It's basically uh, it's basically Gremlins versus punks on a plane, uh, which I wrote and produced, um, and it's a lot of fun. And there are loads of really cool uh, uh, actresses and actors involved in that. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's the. That's the next thing, and then we'll see what happens after that. <laughs>